can you get a good sound from a DF Player Mini MP3 player? Well, today we're going to explore an Arduino sound project. The DF Player Mini is a compact MP3 player module that primarily supports MP3 audio format, but it can also play WAV files and WMA files. You can use up to a 32GB microSD card to store all your audio files, and also fully supports the FAT16 and 32 file system. All the audio data is sorted by folder and supports up to 100 folders, and every folder can hold up to 255 songs. And this module, with its compact design, is known for its small footprint, making it easy to integrate into DIY projects, and that's exactly why we're going to try it out today. The DF Player Mini can drive speakers directly thanks to its onboard amplifier, which is suitable for low power applications. It typically supports 3 watt speakers with 4 ohm impotence, but can also be connected to external amplifiers, which is what we're going to do today, and also headphones through its digital to analog converter outputs. This module can also be controlled by serial commands, making it easy to interface with microcontrollers like Arduino and Raspberry Pi. And this allows for complex playback features that we'll use today, such as play, pause, next, previous, volume control, and more. It operates on a wide range of DC power supply voltages from 3.3 volt to 5 volt, and this makes it compatible with most microcontroller logic levels and battery powered applications. The DF Player Mini is very popular in educational projects, DIY music players, and also sound effects for models and toys. When browsing online forums, I've noticed a large number of complaints about sound quality when it comes to the DF Player Mini. So today we're going to see if we can get at least a good sound coming from this module with an external amplifier. When working with the DF Player Mini, it's important to be mindful of the power supply requirements and speaker compatibility to ensure optimal performance and avoid damaging the module. It's very easy to do. Additionally, proper formatting of the SD card and organization of the audio files can be crucial for smooth operation and playback. The micro SD card is in the FAT32 format and I've just placed 16 MP3s on the card. The naming format for these MP3s need to start with four digits. For example, 0001.mp3 or you can name it 0001 and the name of the track .mp3. Today we'll be using the TDA7297 audio amplifier board module along with the Arduino and the DF Player Mini MP3 player. We're going to use Arduino to control the DF Player Mini for audio playback and then amplify the output audio signal using the TDA7297 amplifier board for driving speakers. When you do this, you want to ensure the power supply can accommodate the voltage requirements for all three components. This amplifier operates between 6 and 18 volts. Today we're going to use 12 volts. The DF Player Mini can operate at 5 volts as well as the Arduino board, so we'll use the same power supply for both of those. This amplifier can output up to 15 watts per channel into an 8 ohm load, and that makes it suitable for driving small to medium sized speakers. This is a two channel unit, meaning that you can use two speakers ranging from 4 to 8 ohms. You'll notice that the speakers I'm using today are 8 ohm 10 watt speakers. They were pulled from a 54 inch LCD Samsung television. The impotence of my speakers do match the compatibility of this driver, and that is important for optimal power transfer and system efficiency. My speakers are 10 watt speakers, and each channel of this amplifier is 15 watts. While that doesn't automatically mean that I'll damage my speakers, it does require you to be mindful of the volume levels to avoid overdriving them. You may have noticed this black fin attached to the back side of the board. It's a heat sink, and its purpose is to dissipate heat generated by the IC during operation, keeping it cool and preventing overheating, so it does get hot, so be aware of that. This module does come with volume control. You can see the black disc on the front of the board. You spin it left and right to turn the volume up and down. You'll also notice that there are three pins on this amplifier, and we'll connect those directly to the DF Player Mini. In this setup, I have the Arduino Nano powered by the USB. I also have it connected to the DF Player Mini and four buttons. The DF Player Mini is directly connected to the TDA7297 amplifier and the amplifier is connected to the speakers. I guess the easiest way to show you the connections would be one section at a time while looking at a diagram. As you can see, I provided a DF Player Mini pinout on the right and I have two pins from the Arduino Nano connected directly to the DF Player. The RX pins 10 and 11 are declared RX and TX for communication with the DF Player. One important thing to remember is when connecting Arduino pin 11 to the RX pin of the DF Mini to use a resistor. 
I also connect the ground pin and 5 volt pin of the Arduino to the breadboard rails. Since the DF Player Mini is 5 volt tolerant, I connected the VCC pin and the ground pin to the rails as well. The DF Player Mini can be very sensitive to voltage fluctuations, and if your power supply is not very stable, adding a capacitor across the power supply terminals can help smooth out the voltage spikes and dips. You should always place the capacitor as close as possible to the power supply terminals of the module. This helps to minimize the length of wires between the capacitor and the DF Player Mini. In this setup, I'm using a 1000 microfarad electrolytic capacitor to smooth out fluctuation in voltage and a 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor to filter out noise. We choose the ceramic capacitor because it has a very low ESR, which is equivalent series resistance, and that means they can effectively filter out high frequency noise by providing a low impedance path to ground for AC signals, and this makes them very well suited for decoupling and bypassing applications. You may notice a number on your ceramic capacitor. This represents the capacitance value in picofarads. In this case, the 104 means the capacitor has the capacitance value of 100,000 picofarads, and that's equivalent to 0.1 microfarads. Here you'll see four buttons attached to pins 2, 3, 4, and 5 on the Arduino. The buttons are also attached to the 5 volt rail on the breadboard, and they're attached to the ground rail by a 10k ohm pull-up resistor. Here you can see that there are three pins on the amplifier that are connected directly to the DF Player Mini. The ground pin of the amplifier is connected to ground of the DF Player Mini. The IN1 and IN2 are connected to speaker 1 and speaker 2 of the DF Player Mini. You can use 6 to 18 volts to power this amplifier, so I'm using a 12 volt AC adapter as my power supply. Both speakers should be 4 to 8 ohm 15 watt, my speakers are 8 ohm 10 watt. That means I just need to be aware that turning the volume too high could damage them. There are two other wires I haven't talked about, those are just providing power and ground to the second half breadboard that I have. Next we'll take a look at the Arduino Nano code that we'll be using. We import two libraries, the Software Serial Library and the DF Player Mini Library. And we create a software serial instance called My Software Serial, and that's created to communicate with the DF Player Mini module using pins 10 and 11 on the Nano. And we define our four buttons for next, repeat, back, and stop. In the setup, we initialize the software serial communication between Arduino and the DF Player Mini using 9600 baud rate. And we initialize the standard hardware serial communication at 115200, and this is used for debugging purposes. Then we set the volume for the MP3 player to 10, and we set up our buttons as inputs. In the loop function, we see that if the next button is pressed, it instructs the MP3 player to play the next track and adds a delay for debouncing. If the repeat button is pressed, it'll instruct the MP3 player to play the current track and then start that track over again. There's also a delay for debouncing. And then if the back button is pressed, it instructs the MP3 player to play the previous track. And if the stop button is pressed, it instructs the MP3 player to pause the playback. Right now I have a 1000 ohm resistor on the RX pin of the DF Player Mini and I'm sure you can hear the static and background noise from the speakers just sitting here. Does that background noise occur while the music's playing? I'm going to change this 1K resistor to a 1.5K resistor in hopes that there's less noise in the background. I took the 1K ohm resistor off the RX pin of the MP3 player and replaced it with a 1.5K and you may be able to tell it sounds a lot better. And I think you can significantly improve your sound quality by having the right decoupling capacitors and resistors in your circuit. With this phone I can still hear a little bit but the phone speakers are very sensitive. And here's a little button demo. 